I was on patrol one night and got a call on my cell phone. My oldest brother, Blake, needed to come see me urgently that night. I had no idea that it would have entailed a murder. Ash, North Carolina is the hometown for three brothers. Wes Evans, a cop, Blake Evans, a truck driver, and Trent Evans, the most likely of the three to cause problems. If there's been anyone to get into trouble, he was by far the most likely person to, to get into trouble. Trouble is what the call's about. Trent, according to his brother Blake, is in deep. He told me, you know, the same thing that happened to me, happened to Don Spaulding. I said, so what you saying is you did kill the man? He said, hell yeah. In 1985, Donald Spaulding was found face up on the floor of his barn three bullet holes in his chest. 18 years later, Trent Evans is threatening to do the same to his brother Blake. Now the third brother, Wes, the police officer, needs to figure out what to do about it. Lieutenant David Crocker and Captain Gene Kaysen work major crimes for Brunswick County. They pull the murder file of Don Spaulding and discover Trent Evans was once married to Shirley Spaulding's daughter. Shirley was Don Spaulding's wife and at the time of the murder, a hot suspect in the case. Gason and Crocker ask Wes Evans to wear a wire, set up a meet, and help make a case for murder against his brother. You know, it's my hope that he's not guilty. You know, it's my hope. But I'll find out when I look into his eyes. I don't know, because I grew up with him. On April 23, 2003, Wes Evans gets in the car with his brother Trent and drives out to their father's grave. I'm your brother, and I'm here to help you in the matter. Oh, I know that, Rita. Blake called me last night. Millen Knight. And he told me some things that told me that you was involved in Don Dean. Don fought for six years ago. Yeah. All right. And he looked at me, and he denied it. But the look on his face was... There's the look of a guilty man. As the two brothers pull up to the empty graveyard, detectives are parked in a car less than a mile away. Yeah, we were listening to every word. Number one, we wanted to hear what was being said at the time. And number two, we wanted to ensure Wes's safety. I just kept reiterating that I was going to cover for him. And who better to have in his corner than a police officer as an alibi? Me being a police officer, I can I can help you and cover you. I'll be in your corner, but I think I got to know the damn facts. That's all I'm asking. I said, now, the, the truth is you were there that night. You were in that barn, weren't you? I said something to that effect, and he said, he said a very low, yes, I was. Wes Evans leaves the cemetery with an audio tape that appears to seal the case for murder against his brother. It is a piece of evidence, however, that comes with a price tag. But there had always been a certain respect that I felt that he had for me, a certain trust, and I used that trust up that day. Three hours after meeting with his brother, Trent Evans sits in a police interrogation room, answering questions about Don Spaulding. Trent claims he is being framed by his brother Blake for a murder he did not commit. He said, I'm going to go down yard the sheriff's department. He said, I'm going to tell him you killed Don Spaulding. I said, Blake, I said, go ahead, son. I said, you want me to use my phone to call? Cold case detectives listen to Trent's bluster and then confront him with the audio tape collected by his other brother, Wes. And confronted him with it, and you could see the tie turn. Uh, he became very anxious, uh, uneasy in that room with us. Uh, he knew that we knew everything, and uh, he had to make a decision. Trent's mother is brought into the room, and he begins to talk. First about Shirley Spaulding. Trent claims Shirley offered him money to kill Don, which he thought was a joke. According to Trent, he even laughed about it with a co-worker, Michael Strickland. And Mike said, hell, I'll do it. 
Mike Street. Mike Street. Okay. I, I thought it was, was, a, was a joke. Cold case detectives believe they have a case against Trent Evans, but want more. Specifically, the woman behind the murder, Don's wife, Shirley. Are you willing tonight to go and talk to Shirley? Would you, would you consider doing it? Yeah. Would that work, that ankle? I would give it a whirl. You sure you use it No, I have not. Trent is tape recording the conversation for police, hoping to entice Shirley into talking about a secret they share. The plan she concocted to kill her husband, Don Spaulding. When he went to Shirley, he went to her under the guise that there's talk about this murder that had occurred, and uh, he more or less gets confrontational with her about wanting to know if she's been running her mouth. How do I know I can trust you? Have a cheese, just me? Yeah. Well. Sure. Honey, I am, yes, yeah, I am so sure, if I could stand on my head, I would do it. When she says that, I mean, we know that she's taking the bait. When I got that last out of the bank, it was for you and Dickie's truck. It was $7,500. And that's what was in that last envelope I gave you. Uh, and the very last statement she said was, I gave you my last $7,500 for your truck, which is something we hadn't heard before. Apparently some money was given for the last payment for his truck. Police believe the cash payment to be blood money, a tangible link between Shirley Spaulding and her husband's murder. We're on target. Enough for her to say the cover up, let's do this, talk about the exchange of money. We felt confident that uh, we definitely had our master plan here. And at that point, we know we got enough we can charge her. We were absolutely elated. And we started just giving each other high fives. Gold case detectives believe Shirley Spaulding killed her husband for his money, with Trent Evans and Michael Strickland acting as muscle. Remain seated and come to order. Court's back in session. In the spring and summer of 2004, all three defendants plead guilty to second-degree murder. Shirley Spaulding gets 30 years in prison, Trent Evans, 21 years, and Michael Strickland, 25 years. I know this doesn't make up for what happened, for what he did to them, but I hope at least that this gives them the closure that they uh, were after all these years. At the end of the day, one is right and one is wrong, and you got to make that choice. And this case was personal for me, and it was not a matter of choosing my profession over my brother's freedom. It was a matter of choosing between right and wrong.